Good morning, church. Today we're looking at Hosea chapter 10. I love this chapter because uh, it points me to the gospel. Uh, Hosea continues to lay out his charge against Israel, and it's bad news, as we've seen in every chapter so far. Um, but in verse 11 and 12, he says something really interesting. He says, Ephraim was a trained calf that loved to thresh, and I spared her fair neck. But I will put Ephraim to the yoke. Judah must plow. Jacob must harrow for himself. Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap steadfast love. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and rain righteousness upon you. So at first it says, he's talking about Israel, Ephraim, and, and Judah. And uh, he, when he says Jacob, that's the whole. He's, he's saying before these people were protected from work. They were uh, my special people. They, he says, I spared her fair neck. I, he's using a metaphor of a cow that's doing work on a farm. Um, but this one was protected because it was special to the Lord. Just as Adam and Eve were protected from work and, and death in Eden. God protected them. And then Israel was offered this special land where it, the land would flow with milk and honey to provide for them if they would remain faithful to the Lord. Um, but they've turned their back on that. And they've said, that's not what we want. And so now God says, so you're going to have to sow for yourselves righteousness. You're going to have to put together these works and sa make these sacrifices and you're going to have to show, show some effort to build up this righteousness for yourself so that I can then come and give you forgiveness. And Israel did this for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, they lived this life of sacrifice and they lived this life of um, clinging deeply to the Torah as if it was going to be the way that saved them. And they lived that way thinking that what God wanted from them was the sacrifices. They lived that way thinking that what God wanted from them was perfection. And that's not what God was asking for. That's not, that's never been what God was asking for from them. God wanted from them what he wants from us. He wanted them to have faith, to trust his provision. And when they made sacrifices, he was saying, this is a provision, that, that blood is provision for your sin. And one day, a final provision will be made to cover you. But the priests, the, the, uh, the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees, they, they bent that out of shape. And they said, we've got to work harder. We've, we've got to make ourselves righteous. Um, but in Hebrews chapter 10, it says uh, in verse 4, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. And burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. Jesus was always going to be the sacrifice that was meaningful. His blood poured out was the one that would save. It wasn't the animals. It wasn't the system of the law. The Torah is actually a word that means teaching. God's just trying to show them what it means to live in relationship with him. And his, his object was never to saddle on them a law that they had to keep perfectly so that they would, you know, stay on this straight line and never fall one way or the other. He knew they couldn't do it because of sin. Instead, he had this plan to send his son to live the perfect life, to die and sacrifice for himself so that we could be given righteousness. It's just imputed to you because of nothing that you've done. And then any command that you follow after that, any faithful obedience, any righteousness that you build up after that, it's not in an attempt to avoid sin or avoid hell or to be a good person. Because those sacrifices, those laws, th that's not what God wants. God wants 
relationship with us. And he just gave it to us through Jesus. And now out of relationship with him, we trust his commands. We live the way that he designed because we know he's right. And we love him and we trust him and we have faith. That's the gospel. I just, I, I've been given righteousness and now I get to live it out because it's the way that I find blessing and life. So as you pursue righteousness, live in light of that.